In this video, we're going to look at a couple examples of multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Our first example involves multiplying two rational expressions. And rational exp expression is basically math talk for uh, fractions. Rational being a, a number that can be expressed as a fraction. And so when we're talking about rational expressions, we're talking about fractions usually that have variables in them, as you see here. So our first fraction is k squared plus 5k plus 6 all over k squared plus 9k plus 14. And we're going to multiply that by a second fraction, k squared plus 7k over k squared minus 4k minus 21. So um, to kind of get an idea about how you would want to approach this, it helps to think about how you would approach multiplying fractions in general. If you had, say, 10 over... 9 times 12 over 25. You know that when you multiply fractions, you basically multiply straight across. But you also know that you can cancel when you're multiplying fractions. So if I had 10 and 25, I could cancel a 5 out of both of those and reduce those. Uh, the reason you can cancel a 5, and you probably some of you might not do this, but 10 is 5 times 2. So I could break that 10 down to 5 times 2 and I could break the 25 down to 5 times 5 and then I could see that I could cancel these 5's. Similarly, I could break down the 9 to 3 times 3 and break down the 12 to 3 times 4 or 3 times 2 times 2 if you want, if you factored it all the way down and then I could see that I could cancel um, the 3's. 1, 3 on the bottom with 1, 3 on the top, numerator and denominator. Now I can't cancel these 2's because they're both in the numerator. It's when you're canceling, you're dividing. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 times anything is itself. So um, hopefully you have that part down. When you're done canceling, you just multiply what's left in the numerator. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 3 times 5 is 15, and that would be your answer. You want to approach this more complicated looking problem the same exact way. The 10 we broke down to 5 times 2. Well we have to figure out how could we break down or factor k squared plus 5k plus 6. Now if you're doing this stuff you're you've definitely done factoring trinomials and you should be very very good at factoring trinomials and all kinds of factoring taking out a greatest common factor before you do this because this is basically four factoring problems just like we factored the 10, the 9, and the 12, and the 25, we're going to have to factor both of these numerators and both of these denominators. So in the first numerator, k squared plus 5k plus 6, uh, that's a trinomial, and it's, a, it's an easy trinomial. If you need help with factoring, you should go back and watch uh, my videos on factoring trinomials. Uh, there's a couple of them. One with, if there's a 1 in front of the leading squared term, you approach it a different way. And uh, another talked about the AC method is one way to factor if there's some coefficient besides 1 in front of the k squared. And we don't have that in this case. All these just have a 1 in front of the k squared, so it's going to be very straightforward factoring. Okay, so we know k times k is k squared, so we'll put those there. And then we just have to think of an, uh, two numbers that multiply to be 6 and add to be 5. And that would be 2 and 3. So I put plus 2 and plus 3, and I've factored that. Now you could FOIL this back together and verify that it does equal k squared plus 5k plus 6. In the denominator, I have a similar trinomial. But now I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be 14 and add to be 9. Can you think of them? Multiply to be 14 and add to be 9. That would be 7 and 2. Now it doesn't matter what order I put these. I could put the k plus 2 and k plus 7. I could switch those. Because of the commutative property, it doesn't matter what order I multiply. Now this next fraction in the numerator, it's not a trinomial. A common mistake is to try to factor this like a trinomial. But notice there's only two terms here. It's a binomial, so you're not going to do the two sets of parentheses deal. Um, what you do have is a common factor between these two terms, and that common factor is k. So we take the k out, and what do we have left? We have k plus 7. So if you distributed this k back in, you would end up with k squared plus 7k. In the denominator we have another trinomial. We do have some negatives we need to watch out for. 
we still have k times k is k squared. Now what multiplies to be negative 21 and adds to be negative 4? Well 7 times 3 is 21 and we want that to add to be a negative 4 so we're going to need a negative 7 and a positive 3. Now that we're all factored we can look and see what we can cancel. The factors are these binomials in the parentheses. So k plus 2 is a factor of the first numerator and it could cancel with another k plus 2 in the denominator of either fraction. Therefore this k plus 2 is going to cancel with this k plus 2. Alright, let's go to k plus 3. I have a k plus 3. Is there a k plus 3 factor in the denominator? Yes there is. So I can cancel this k plus 3 with this k plus 3. Now this is just a k and it could only cancel with just a k in the denominator. Now this k plus 7 is one factor. I can't separate out that k as a separate factor. And also this k minus 7 is a complete factor. So I cannot cancel these two k's here like this. I can cancel this k plus 7 with this k plus 7. I'm done canceling now so I need to look and see what I have left. In the numerator I just have a k and in the bottom I have a k minus 7. And that would be the answer. And again you cannot cancel these k's because k is not a factor of the denominator. You can only cancel something that multiplies to give the denominator. Just like we broke the, these, the simpler problem down by multiplying and k minus 7 doesn't factor so you're done. So the steps are to factor, cancel, and write your answer. It's really all about factoring. Once you know the process, it's all about making sure you do the correct factoring. All right, let's look at another example. Let's look at a dividing example. Now, if you remember when you're dividing fractions, let's look at a, a simple example to start. If you have something like uh, one third divided by, um, let's do 2 ninths. So if I was going to do that simple problem, I keep the first fraction the same, I change this to a multiply, and I do the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now it's a multiplication problem, so I can approach it just like I did that last problem we did, see if anything factors. The 9 factors to a 3 times a 3, I can cancel these 3's, and then I would just write what I have left, which would be 3 over 2. So the only difference between multiplying and dividing rational expressions is this step. To change the divide to a multiply and f take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So let's go ahead and do that over here. So I leave the first fraction the same. While we're doing this we might think a little bit about how these are going to factor. Change that to a multiply and then take the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, so now it's a problem just like the multiplication problem that we did. We need to see if anything's going to factor. So in this first fraction, we have some different factoring than what we saw in the last example. We have, let me write that a little nicer. We have 25x squared minus 4. So what we have is an example of what's called the difference of squares. When you have two terms and a minus between them, if, if they're both terms are perfect squares, you factor it um, using the difference of squares formula. Let me write that down somewhere. How about over here? So the difference of squares would look like a squared minus b squared, and that would factor to a minus b, a plus b. So they have to be perfect squares. All right, so let's factor. Let's see, what times itself is 25x squared? That would be 5x and 5x. And what times itself is 4? That would be 2 and 2. And then you make one a positive and one a negative, and it doesn't matter the order. Now this isn't really a video on factoring, but factoring is such a big part of this. Um, let's go ahead and just take a half a second, and well, it's going to take longer than a half a second, to verify that 5x plus 2 times 5x minus 2 definitely does give you 25x squared minus 4. So to do that, we would FOIL multiply or distribute depending on how you think of it. So 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 
5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. 2 times 5x is a positive 10x. And positive 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So you can see what's going to happen with these x terms. They're going to drop out. And then you just end up with this binomial. And that's why you have to have 1 plus and 1 minus to make the middle term drop out. Also to create a, a negative or a minus on your last term. We have a similar situation with our x squared minus 64. That's another difference of squares. Notice it's only two terms. That's a big tip off. When you only see two terms, you want to check it out. Is it the difference of squares? So it has to be two perfect squares. And x squared is a perfect square because it's x times x. 64 is a perfect square because it's 8 times 8. And then it has to have a minus between it. If that was a plus, if it was x squared plus 64, it wouldn't factor. Because if you did x minus 8, x plus 8, you'd end up with a negative 64. And that wouldn't be it because you need a positive. So let's say you make that a plus. Well, if you make that a plus, your middle term's not going to drop out. So this guy is actually prime. He doesn't factor if, he, if it's got a plus in there. Okay, but we're, we're good because this is a minus. So we can do x times x is x squared, and 8 times 8 is 64, and we make 1 a plus and 1 a minus. Now the second fraction over here, these are both binomials in the numerator and denominator, but notice there's no x squared. It's just x to the first power. That's not going to factor if it's just an x to the first power, unless you could take out just a, a, a constant. Uh, what I mean by that... Let's say you have you had a problem that had um, you know six x plus nine, and could I factor that? Well, the most you could do would take would be to take out a three, so you could take out some constant if there's no x squared term. Okay, so over here, let's finish up. We got five x minus two, and hopefully you see what we can cancel now. Hopefully you're looking at that and seeing well we got an x minus eight and an x minus eight a 5x minus 2 and a 5x minus 2. So we are left with 5x plus 2 over x plus 8. And that would be our final answer. So the big thing here is to make sure you're really good at your factoring. If you need help um, factoring, go back and watch some videos on factoring. Once you once you've got the factoring down and you're confident about the factoring, the process of this is more just like a bunch of little factoring problems. And then the canceling is fairly straightforward from there. All right, well, I hope that helps.